After nearly two decades Putin came to power, many are still trying to figure out the man behind the name. All the Kremlin's men, inside the court of Vladimir Putin, by Mikhail Zigar, addresses this question in an unprecedented and compelling manner. While most books on Russian politics focus extensively on Putin and merely rehash familiar stories, Zigar focuses on the people surrounding the president. As such, his book gradually dissolves the image of Putin and reveals a gripping narrative of the decision-making procedures in the Kremlin. My name is Shirvan and this is a review for The Bookshelf. As one of Russia's leading journalists, Zigar worked for the Ruski Newsweek, the Daily Kommersant and most recently he was the former chief editor of the independent news TV channel Dosht. In his line of work he covered the events in Iraq, Lebanon, Sudan, Kyrgyzstan, etc. Some of his work made global news, such as the Russian arms supplies to Uzbekistan and the Andijan massacre. Yet not everyone is pleased with Zigar's investigative reports. As such, he has been the target of politically motivated attacks. In one instance, he was brutally beaten in the streets of Moscow. Zigar's background in investigative journalism makes him uniquely qualified to unravel the inner workings of Russia's political elite. As such, in his latest book, All the Kremlin's Men, the author manages to get close to hundreds of top officials who have worked with Putin in the last 17 years. To that end, the author presents a complete different view of power and politics in Russia. In one of his theories, Zigar discloses that the Russian president is not the strong man he appears. The author explains that while Putin is a single individual who takes all the major decisions related to the direction of the country, his opinion, however, is shaped by a circle of trusted advisors that surround him. This narrative implies that Putin is a collective judgment of dozens of politicians, civil servants, former spies, corrupt oligarchs, conservative Christians, nationalist hardliners, multicultural liberals, bureaucrats and many more. What's more is that the members of Putin's inner circle have competing interests and seek to enrich themselves by either advising or deceiving the president. For instance, when former Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev wanted to liberalize the economy, the chief of Rosneft Igor Sechin advocated for a state-controlled economy and thwarted Medvedev's every move. With these examples, all the Kremlin's men offers a chilling view of the decision-making procedures in Russia. It means that whenever Putin makes a decision, he is continuously evaluating the compatibility of his resolution with the general strategy of his peers. All the Kremlin's men covers the most influential factions in Moscow, such as the camp of Patriarch Kirill or the Yeltsin clan, the Medvedev group, Kadyrov's Chechen network and the Siloviki family, the latter which has an enormous influence in the FSB, GRU, SVR and other intelligence bodies. The book also examines the influence of distinguished politicians such as Sergei Ivanov, Alexei Kudrin, Gleb Pavlovsky, Alexandra Dugin and many more. In the United States and Europe, little is understood about these groups and characters. Yet, this community of voices helps to shape Putin's opinion on political, economic and diplomatic matters. One of my favorite chapters concerned Vladislav Surkov, the leading political technologist who reintroduced the concept of sovereign democracy and helped to redesign Russia's modern society. More precisely, Surkov helped Putin to retain high approval ratings by using the mainstream media as an instrument to manipulate falsehood and truth. He used state funds to sponsor liberals, anti-fascist movements, but also opposing groups such as neo-Nazi groups. Over time, the level of false and contradictory narratives confused the political landscape to such a degree that most of the Russian public wasn't sure what was really going on in their country. 
Thus, by constantly shifting falsehood and truth, Surkov made sure that the perception of reality bore no relationship to the truth. For his skills and close relationship with Putin, Surkov is also known as the Grey Cardinal. In recent years, Surkov's media manipulation has also been introduced in Europe and North America. Thus, in this context, all the Kremlin's men serves not only as an analysis of the Russian system, but also bears lessons for similar developments in the West. Besides the examination of Kremlin's inner circle, the author also demonstrates how the group has influenced Putin's objectives over the years. Zigar accomplishes this by comparing each stage of Putin's rule to three historical monarchs. For instance, his early days resembled that of Richard the Lionheart. Putin's first term was marked by a number of national disasters, such as the 1999 apartment bombings, the 2000 Kursk submarine disaster, the 2002 theater hostage crisis, the 2004 Beslan massacre, and the Second Chechen War. Yet, despite the odds, Putin dealt with the disasters accordingly and emerged as a strong military leader. The president's second term from 2004 to 2008 is compared to that of Peter the Great. Putin dragged the backwards state he inherited into the modern age, thanks to the oil boom which inspired enormous state spending, which brought forth a vast middle class. The president adopted the latest technologies in engineering, agriculture, architecture and culture. For his efforts, Putin, much like Peter the Great, is acknowledged as a cultural revolutionary and a great modernizer. Finally, the fourth chapter covers Putin's crackdown on liberal movements, the annexation of Crimea and the occupation of eastern Ukraine as well as the intervention in Syria. In this narrative, Putin is compared to Ivan the Terrible and is described as a somewhat reluctant leader whose long reign of graceful achievements descended into ruthless paranoia. Now, apart from the deliberate content of the book, All the Kremlin's Men also has an unexpected component in the form of Russian humor. Every chapter starts with an anecdote about a powerful member of Putin's inner circle. For instance, Sergei Ivanov is described as a mysterious villain from James Bond, while Igor Sechin is portrayed as a workaholic cyborg who is devoid of emotions and needs little sleep. There are also also many illustrations of Putin's mind games. For example, back in 2007, Putin brought his large black Labrador to the meeting with the German Chancellor in an effort to undermine her. As a result, photos of the meeting depict a terrified Merkel who has a fear of dogs after she was bitten in the mid-1990s, while Putin is seen grinning. These anecdotes are great storytelling and they lighten up the mood of the overall content. Another big plus is the Who is Who chapter, which is a list of major characters the book deals with. For readers who are less traversed in Kremlinology, this chapter is a welcoming addition. One disclaimer though, this book doesn't address the questions concerning Putin. Instead, it provides a glimpse into the political factions and structures that govern the Kremlin and surround the president. Unfortunately, however, the reaction from the Russian government has been less than positive. Following the publication of the book, the author was forced to resign from his position at TV Dorscht. Yet, in the words of Tyrion Lannister, by tearing out a man's tongue, you're not proving him a liar, you're only telling the world that you fear what he may say. As a bestseller in Russia, All the Kremlin's Men is a thrilling book. In fact, it is the most interesting and content-rich source on Russian politics since the Yeltsin era. However, like most sources on Kremlinology, there is no certainty of truth. Therefore, the book must be read with a degree of healthy skepticism. Overall, it is a well-written, funny and intriguing book. If you're interested in Russia, Putin or if you're searching for a good non-fiction espionage adventure, this book is worth your time.
And if you want to buy the book, use our Amazon affiliate links in the description. It won't cost you extra and will earn some money to support our content. This was a Caspian Report by me, Shidavan. Special thanks to our contributors on Patreon, who made this report possible, especially since YouTube's ad revenues have dropped significantly over the past few months. And if you want to help us produce more original content, check out our crowdfunding page on patreon.com slash caspianreport. In any case, thank you for your time, and Saul.